Hey guys, uh, happy to be here and this is the first conversation that we are having at uh, Chigun Road Art Studio and uh, it's an open panel, it's, it's not uh, a curated panel so feel free to, to jump in, uh, even the audience there, uh, we have an audience uh, that is watching us and that is listening from us. And the theme of this conversation, uh, which is about 10 minutes, is going to be about art and community. And I think I will let the people uh, you see on the panel introduce themselves once again uh, in relation to the theme, but also see how we can then dive into the theme and their understanding. Probably the first question would be, would be, uh, Art versus community, what's your understanding of art versus or art in relation to community? Uh, I can pass okay. the mic, then you say something. Okay. <laughs> um, my name is Katumba Hamza. I'm the General Secretary for the Youth, Lufka Village, and also Ndeji as a ward. Where in Ndeji ward we have over eight villages, and uh, every youth I'm concerned to be there as long as it concerns the youth. And I'm very glad to be part of today's open studio. And uh, my first impression was the day I first entered here. I remember I was blown away. <laughs> I was very surprised to know that there are people that do art of this level and they're in my community. And since I'm part of much in the Savagabo community website, uh, we decided to be part of the Chigundu Art Studio to look for a way we can partner to promote what we have today here or what we are seeing today. And with the relation of the theme we had today, art and the community, first of all, I'm very surprised that today is a Sunday. I know one of the biggest challenges we are facing in Machin de Savagabo as a municipality with the youth is drug abuse. There are a lot of youths right now that are using drugs instead of promoting or promoting their talents or promoting their sales to another level. They see this world as something small, but rather there's something bigger than them, even if you have to consider this world. Now, with the theme that we have today, I believe there are a lot of youths that are here. They have converged for something beneficial rather than doing something that doesn't add on to your life. Now, I believe this is very good and very important for the youth within much in the Sava Gabo and Uganda at large or the world at large. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Mronja Kevin. I'm a fashion designer, a textile designer, a graphics designer. I will take, I will take this theme as something so important because it's so special to me. Um, there are times, I'll start with the story, I'm sorry. Uh, there were times where I felt alone because I didn't have a community, because I didn't know the people to talk to about what I do. And it was one of the things that I turned to an introvert, I would say. Uh, but art is something beautiful that it brought me back to being social communicating and sharing my ideas. It got me to be audible and understand what goes around more than, that goes more on than just about me that could benefit people around me and help the community. Uh, because of art, I get to meet Chigundu. We met online, I would say, and this is when I get to know that he has a studio and he has done so much about art and I feel the urge to meet him and we get to communicate. Because of art is the reason why I talk to this gentleman over here. Uh, because of art, I get to meet so many of you people in the audience and we get to know what we all do and how better we can get at art. So it's something so productive and it's something that could take you a mile. Right now I see bigger things, creating things, getting ideas more and more on a daily because I have a community. So it's so impactful to everyone. Uh, 
yeah, basically I would say art is so important that we have to value it every single day. Yeah. Yes, uh, I won't go further of what they have say, they have shared so far, but what I can say, oh, I'm sorry, but my name is Miguela and I'm an artist designer. Well, art, we, uh, their community is like art, first of all, it's something like you're passionate with, like the real you is what uh, like art is to me, what it means to me is me being open to the world. And the community is the group of people like coming together, nations and everyone. So our arts, it's all, all like to bring out, to express and to, to show what we can as youth, as young people, because we, we, we bring what we know and what we do. That's what I can say so far. Thank you. Wow. Uh, uh, so, I'll speak for myself as well, because this, like, there is no panelist and moderator, just that I'm the acting model, yeah, yeah, I'm an acting moderator, uh, but for me, art is a journey, art is life, art imitates life, and life imitates art, so uh, I think those who are here for the first open studio, I share the story of uh, the journey that it took to, to start the studio in the first place. It was a moment of reflection, a moment of uh, thoughts, a moment of, uh, a moment of imposter syndrome, if you know what it means, like where you think about, where you doubt yourself and you're like, can I do this? And if I do this, uh, who does it benefit? Uh, so. At the end of the day, I, I decided to do it. It was after a trip I took uh, to India. And on my way back, I was like, I was challenged by the artists I met, the people that I met, and the community that I had built outside of my home community. And this is to show that art can make you build communities, art can push you to, art is a community in itself. Because when you meet an artist, you even connect before they even know your name. So uh, for me, that is where the idea of the studio came in, but also the idea of having the community invested in the studio, where people actually get to come in a lot of times as artists we like i've said earlier we work in si in in silence in underground eh? so we tend to go underground then we call people to to see our work at exhibitions but then sometimes one of the challenges that i've seen in our country is even when you invite ugandans to an exhibition sometimes they don't understand the art that we are trying to share with them but then I thought of this idea, why not invite people when we are creating, when we are actually in the studio, when we are working, so that they get to experience the creative process, so that if they have children, they can inspire them to actually create. I remember in my, in my primary, we used to draw on book covers. Uh, if my teacher didn't encourage, encourage us or me to us actually as a class to draw, to buy art books and draw, I think I wouldn't be doing art because for him, he understood the value of, of pushing children out of their comfort zone, but also thinking out of the box. Yeah, so, yeah, for me, art is that to me. Yeah, and I think I'm happy that I can actually uh, share this with as many people as possible, but also uh, get to mentor as many artists, young artists as possible to be better than than me and also better than what they are at the moment. Yeah, so on to my next question. Now I'm back to moderator mode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but before I go on, in case you have a question in the audience, please don't hesitate to ask. 
uh, my next question would be, how do you, as artists, uh, we've heard from uh, Hamza and from the leadership perspective of youths, uh, we've heard from Kevin and his story about the experiences he's gone through, but also how he came to meet me as an artist, then Miguela, the same thing, the expression. How do you think, uh, as community, we, we, uh, we can get invested more, not as an art community, but as, as community, the outside community, the public? Uh, for example, if you're an artist and you live in a certain area, but then the community around you doesn't know about you, how do you think that community sh can get more invested in you, in what you do, and, and also push people to pursue what you do, how do you think this can happen? And how do you think we can help as well the community understand that art is not something. Artists are not, of course we are learners, because yeah, yeah, yeah. we get to be in our heads too much, but then how do we get to get out of our heads? How do we get to involve people in our art? Let them come and enjoy in our studios, we get to talk about things. One of the things that actually happens in this studio is we randomly talk about topics, we argue about topics. Me, Emma, and Kevin are always arguing about different topics. And sometimes you get to a conclusion, sometimes you get to learn something new. So this is, this is basically what we are having now. So yeah, I'll start with Hamza. Thank you. Um, I believe uh, with my story as much part of being much in the Savagabo community, uh, when we were starting up a website, there was a lot of questions that we had. We as youths, we are facing a lot of problems. And we decided as in how can we face the community, let the community accept what we are and be profitable to it. For example, we usually met different chairmen of different villages, but they were like, we have science to be taken. How do I benefit as a chairman? Somebody who would have helped you would be like, how do I benefit him personally? And would face such a challenge. First of all, mindset is very important for the village level that we are. First of all, if we have to change or we involve the community into what we want. We have to change their mindsets. For example, many parents think that art is just a game. You're going to draw, you, there's nothing profitable in it. I bought my cousin, my young brother. I told him, come and see, because he draws art. Before, my dad, I also used to draw Tevin Nose because we studied primary together. But rather, I used to draw and with other friends. We usually had good art, and we believed and had dreams in art. But rather, we fail, some of us failed to push them because we never had people that would encourage us to invest more into what we have as a talent. But rather, I believe if we involve more of these children, they like it. They like the art. If they get people who can inspire them, whereby we have to go back to the parents we talk to them. For example, I saw the, your YouTube channel, you have the website, all those are means, all good means on how we have to involve the community to be part of the art. And I believe with time, there is change. There are changes because this is the first studio that we have in March in the Savagabo as a municipality. That's a big change and that's a big drive. In the morning, you saw I bought a friend. He was, we went on the border border, he was like, man, those guys have art. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> because he thought that to have such a studio, you have to go to town yeah. to get such an opportunity. Now, we believe such opportunities, if they come to the community, it's a big step that we have taken. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> oh. um, well, uh, I'm going to start from his point where he, start, where he said in between the that we used to draw as kids. Uh, he might not recall, we used to buy budget books. I don't know if people know budget books. The green books. Yeah, oh, you know Peak Fair. Now, now we, couldn't afford, we couldn't afford Peak Fair, so we used to buy the budget books. Uh, it was like 200 shillings and a pencil. 
and uh, we drew cars. I recall these stories. We drew bubblegum cartoons. And uh, one time we have a friend of ours, he's called Frenny. Uh, he's a graphics designer too. I asked him and I told him, do you recall those days? This, these are things that I reflect on too back when I recall my journey as an artist. It starts way back. Things get rough in, the, in between the, but one time things that are destined for you come back, you know. Um, it has been so much of persistence, so much of hard work. I have a dream that I haven't yet earned out of, but I still keep on pushing for it. I do many jobs just to see my artwork out there. Um, I would say that the impact that we create is of us, but it is out there to the community. That's where I come back to the whole point, that kids who are doing these things as their kids would have a better life if we, are, if we come up onto them and we show them what we are doing. You know, so many people are getting inspired, even the grown-ups, you know. There are people who have dreams and they don't know how to go about them. People know art is always about pieces, you know. Someone asked me, where are your pieces? And I was like, art is different. There is art in fashion, there is art in sculpture, art in woodwork. You see that work over there, the masks. There is art in food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there is so much about the baristas, you know. They do so much about art. Uh, there is so much of art in every part because everything that create, that uh, adds on to creativity is art itself because art is creativity and creativity is art. That even someone, a musician, they are creative. That brings on to art. But the thing is, how do we get these things out there to the world? How do we get more out of it? How do we grow a community that people can be in a better place because of art? It's, it starts here. It starts with artists talking about these things, sharing their stories. I don't know, I might be saying these things and they might be triggering someone's mind, you know? I myself to start doing digital collage. I do digital collage. It was after seeing these pieces, you get it, and I was like, there is something I have in my head. How do I get better at it? How do we explain these things to the old generation, you know, as we are open-minded? There are things that we look onto and we are like, that could be something. Then they are stuck into the mind. Chigundu usually calls it uh, where they, they feel things have to be aligned in some way. You have to go straight, study, work, grow, have a family and all those things. We are seeing different perspectives. So it is us to share what we know and do what we know because if we do something, it helps trigger someone else. Hey, that's when you see your mom being like, hey, now the kid is doing art, he's going to fly tomorrow, you know? That's where it comes up. We will preach as much as we can, but if we don't do these things, the community will never get involved. That's why I think he created this to get us all together. Yeah, that's all I can say about that. Um, well, God created us with gifts, each one of us and everyone is really special and important in this world. As uh, we can do art, it, as what I thought before when I was in high school, I thought art was just drawing someone, or to look to something and you just draw it out. So I was asking myself, I love art, how can I come up to start drawing someone? So through the connection, through Getting to know some artist is one like uh, the workshop came in uh, 2020 in quarantine is where uh, some of 
our friends, they took us um, to uh, not all just to to help us to find out what we can. I said, okay, let me go to and I see what I can do. For I knew, yeah, I will make something. So they we j they just made us to to do some zines, to do some poetry, and is where I find out that I can do art. And is through what I feel, for I don't know what I do. As I said before, yes, I just express my feelings, the happiness, the joy, the sadness, because uh, I knew a lot was going through people's mind, the depression, the the life we're going through, the miserable life, especially. So, but as you you know, the gift you have. You have to bring it out, and the community has to accept it, because everyone has something to share with, with, with the community. Yes, and we are here in the world to support each other, to help each other. Yes, as life goes on. Wow, wow. <laughs> I think for this one, I won't, I won't be a panel. I won't be a panelist. But uh, uh, we have like four minutes, so I will welcome questions. I saw a hand. Uh, I don't know if uh, uh, the yeah you can you can share a question. Yeah. Yeah. It's not really a question, but I think it would be to encourage. I'm called Maurice Nwagawa. Mm. I'm an OB to him from DJ. Um, I want to mainly talk about how how we can. Let the world understand us. Yeah. Mm. Because I think the biggest issue might not be the creating part, the thirty percent I think, mm. but the preservation of art. For us I think it's one of the things that we put off many other people not to come to the industry. Because you're going to find a piece like that tomorrow, somewhere in the corner, maybe with bitter and dust. So yeah. there is that thing that has to keep on reminding us that this is not just about the drawing bit, yeah, but it's a culture we are representing. So when you do your work, don't just... Because we get discouraged. There's no money, there's what? Yeah. But like, I'm not investing my thing. Yeah. You put it on a side. But the very big thing, the major issue is not your nice work. It might even be nice, but keeping it alive. Because this work is not for us. It's for the generations to come. Yeah. You don't just do your work. Yes, it might be the best work, but keep it around, yeah. keep your work around, because it tells time. People yeah. will come 50 years in the future, and someone will say that work was actually done 90 years ago. I think that's going to affect us in what we want to improve as art, as just us here, in our small DJ, mm. and never know as a continent, because those people have <coughs> sculptures for decades and decades. I think the preservation of art is very important. Once you've done your work, keep it. We treat it that lazy. Like, you move on, then you start thinking about the other idea, the next thing. Yeah. But you have work, that work has to tell where you're coming from. Yeah. That, I, that This work of ours is timeless. I think that's what we should really, 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 really think about when we are doing our works. Keep it alive, keep your work alive. It should be for eternity, I think. Mm. That's my point. That's how we should Thank you, thank you, Maurice. By the way, Maurice is my OB from Ndeje. Six years, right? Yeah, Ndeje, yes, yes, not Ndeje here. <laughs> yeah, so we were with him. Uh, besides being an OB, we were in the same art class. And uh, we were, the, we're doing imaginative composition together. So that's how, and it so happens that he lived in the same community. So uh, when it comes to art, that's how connected we can become that even 10 years later you can you can meet someone you you are with back then yeah but that's a great point uh, preservation of art in context or in relation to art and community I think it's very important to to have to have communities actually preserve art because I, I think this is something I've seen in other countries that have happened to travel to because of art. And it's not something that I have seen here where, for example, the community has a museum. 
Nije community has a place where we can keep our art, where artists can actually have a database. And I think that is an area we can explore um, as making the Sabagabo community, but also as the Ndeje community as well. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I, I don't know if there is any other questions. Yeah, Emma, you're welcome. <laughs> Emma is a big man here. There's a lot of Emmas around here, actually. <laughs> yeah, so if I say, Emma, put up your hands. Yeah, yeah but uh, we are so glad to have you. He, Emma is a uh, founder of Faces Up. Uh, Faces Up is, uh, for those of you who have, who have seen the World Food Day Art Contest, somewhere around here, yeah, he's the man behind the project. And I've been working hand in hand with him. Uh, and of course, we are passionate about children. Besides doing our art here and painting our paintings, we are passionate about children as well. And we are passionate about the young generation, especially those that want to be creatives. Yeah, so we've been doing a project uh, on World Food Day Art Contest, a nationwide project, where we've mobilized over 3,000, right? 3,000 children from Northern Uganda, Eastern Uganda, Western Uganda, Central Uganda, to, 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 to represent uh, uh, in the World Food Day Art Contest. So there will be a very big exhibition uh, in Kampala, so all of you are invited. Uh, and this, is, this will be for children, not adults. Eh? Okay. Yeah, so over, th over 120 children will be exhibiting. Very big exhibition. So. Let's support the young generation, and I don't know if the, my fellow panelists have parting shots. Maybe to start here, I'm going to open the question from the King of Wakanda. Just for me, I to share something that I found very interesting, especially when I found people sharing. Uh, one of the things that we believe in, everyone, is my name is Emmanuel Seti Tokarle. I think what is we are growing and having different art practices, but we cannot give names to those. For example, you can say that the witches had their kind of practice. We don't archive this information for the people to come after us to give this information. And also, we as artists, uh, if you are found in a space, what can we speak about you is your paintings if you have some. But there's no specific information around to show people to walk through your journey, what in other things if you're not in the what you do. I think it's very, very important for us to keep writing about ourselves. Not waiting for the papers to publish you, but writing about your story. Because again, this is contributing to the entire movement of the arts. If someone reads about your painting, someone reads about your movement. Yeah. It kind of, uh, we keep piecing together information. And now that we have this information, then we can start to publish. I've not seen uh, artists who are being published, only published during exhibitions. I think art is way more than that. There's a show that's going to happen at Yamasin for the late adult. The actor who died. I don't know if you know that lady. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, they're going to be showcasing her archive because she has been practicing from the US or different countries. She has that kind of discipline of, of step, keeping all this information about herself and her practice. Now the world is going to come and do it. But if you die as an artist, if people don't take your paintings, what else can they left behind? Which I think it's, it should be our. Uh, before even you invite communities, you should do on a regular basis. You start to write about us. Yeah.
Because for me, it's right now, I just write about children. Even when they grow up, that stories are going to be built in Ghana. Yeah. By the time they make like 30 years, they have a story that was published when they were seven. I think that kind of gives a strength to their practice. And then you find out their works are very expensive. I know I myself, when I look, I would look onto my Instagram page and I'm like, wow, you know? You see the work, the consistency, the, that whole growth. It helps you get better as a person onto how better you could get when you do something way more diverse in your, sec in your section. Yeah, so yeah, let's go into the collection thing too. Um, one of the things that I would want to emphasize is the story be behind the art. Um, there are two pieces in there. I saw one and I got sad. When I saw the other one, I got somehow encouraged but still sad. Then when you came in and you told me there are some pieces which are of happiness, when I came here, I became happy after seeing some pieces. Meaning that there are pieces that you usually see you or you see and you want to feel the story behind that piece and i believe art that's where oh that's the value of art i believe because with addition if the story the the owner of the pieces was around i would have at least asked him to explain the stories behind that art then the other thing um as me being part of the youth community and the youth leadership there are a lot of, there is a lot of money that comes from the government to help out with such activities. But usually, after budgeting, and it comes to the value of what have you done with the money, there is nothing. Whereby that money, if it's still in the government of the local government, for example, of Ndeje or of Machinde Savagabo, it's taken back to the treasury when they're going to budget for the next year. Meaning that we fail to get that money because we don't have what to do. But if we have something that we're doing and we can convince these people that it's beneficial to the youth, we believe they would have had a way we are promoted or we are helped out by the government. And the other thing, these are part of the things that we need. Are there a lot of other youth leaders that I had, I wanted to invite for today, but it was a late call. As we all know, I got to know and these people were like, are you sure? Are, are these things in much in the server gabo? I was like, yes. Um, I was also just informed, but they're there and I've read that they have good pieces. Come and check it out. And there is also, there's a chairman for Ndeje. There's a chairman for Bunamwaya. Then there's a chairman for Masaja. They were all, I had involved all of them, but they were like, if there's another edition, we believe we'll be part of it and we'll make sure that this thing is well advertised for the community that we can access it. That's why I'm saying that the stand that you took to involve me, it means that you wanted the community to be part of it. And it's very easy if we put the energy and the effort to, because I believe what you put in is what you'll gain from the energy that you've put in. And I believe for today, it's very good that I'm part of the Open Studio today, and I believe for more Open Studios that are coming, we are going to be part of it as the youth community and the youth leadership. Thank you. Miguel, are any passing shots? No, I don't. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you have a question? You want to say something? Yeah, sure. So they 
her rules, they'd be like, in case you're a model, these are the rules you're going to follow. And it's the constitution every year to differentiate you from the community. If you're a designer, this is how you're going to act. These are the rules that govern you. Mm. And these are leaders that represent your policies as the fashion. So when people started enforcing those rules that govern them, it became something that was normal to community. So community would be like, okay, I know my child can start being a model. My child can be a fashion designer. That's when the course started getting what? But it started getting exposure in universities and everywhere. Because now they knew that this is an organized community, it has rules governing them, and they are passionate about that. They're going to go force and force it and all those things. Personally, I used to model and uh, currently organize basically events when it comes to pageantry and it's basically fashion. And then I'm a legal officer also for a lawyer. So I believe in preservation of things starts with that what does, let's say copyright, or your website has copyright, everything has something that identifies you. When we are taking uh, an idea to someone, they want to be sure that their future is secure. But if they feel like, I'm going to paint this, then later on maybe I'll die, I'll leave it somewhere, then they'll give it out, and someone will claim it's theirs, or it's marketable, you get? The fact that there's that there's I've not yet seen any sense of security that has been built around art. So someone is like, I'm going to paint my thing with everything I have in my heart and I'm going to maybe put it out there for people to see it. But when I'm going, when I'm away, or when I'm unable to put it out there and I have no resources, let's say I'm in some village there, I can't afford life basically. How will it protect my image? Like when, when it's out there on the wall somewhere and someone has taken it as theirs, how will it be protected? How will people know it was mine? So I think as artists, they should also create that sense of security in the people they are mentoring. Mm -hmm. In that there should be a board governing these things, there should be rules that are stated specifically. Cause uh, most artists I've known have been painting for spaces and what, but I've met like so, so many of those you get. Yeah. So you reach a point and the work is similar. So someone is like, you're making me pay 400 for that, why? Even the other boy told me 100 and they can still have their work. You'd be like, and also have a unique element. Yeah. Not because someone did strings, you're going to do the same strings in the exact same way and put your, your signature. It will be the same recurring thing, and people get bored. They'll be like, okay, we are going to see the same thing. You, you yeah. get. So I think there should be appealing to these boards if they are there. Let's say the federation or something governing these art people to establish these rules and make them make them known to the community that they know this thing has come to stay. It's not temporary. Parents still take it as temporary because they do not see that big thing governing it. I don't know if there's a leader, mm. a president, or maybe art federation, or students, or they do not know those things, basically because the people within those places have also kept them locked away. Mm. Or they also don't believe it enough. Mm. They don't believe in it enough that it can sustain them or sustain the future. So, yeah. Thank you very much. That's, that's, that's actually a valid point. And maybe to, to answer the question, uh, I think for the next edition, we'll have to invite Yuvada President. Yuvada President is uh, Uganda Visual Arts and Design Association. It's an association that is specifically for visual artists, and it's recognized by the government, and it's under the National Culture Forum. So for Yuvada, Yuvada is, is basically f for the visual artists. There's also the new one for, for musicians, if you are a musician. <laughs> You've heard of it. Yeah, so each artist right now has an association or a body that they can register with and become a member. So I'll take, because of what Faith said, I think for the next edition that will happen in November, 
uh, we'll invite a representative from Ovada and also invite a couple of artists who have, who have taken the step uh, towards archiving and uh, putting together some of their work, like what uh, Sechito said earlier. So uh, without wasting more time, I don't know if there's any other thing. Uh, yes, please, Abu. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll speak, I'll speak on behalf of Rodney Chigundu for that one, and then I'll let the other people as well speak for themselves. Uh, I think we'll use two minutes. I myself, outside the studio, I do, a, I, I do quite a lot of work with community, but then I don't do it as, as, as a, a social worker. I do it as an artist. I'm a mural artist. Uh, those of you who know me uh, have seen some of my murals. And these are some of the things that I do within the community to basically, first of all, help community understand what art is, but also let them understand that you can use art to send out a message. Yeah, so besides that, besides being here in studio, that's what I do. I also work in community with children. I co-found an organization called Streetlights Uganda with a couple of friends. Uh, uh, some of them are here, where we, uh, we, we uh, empower street children in Kampala, because that's a challenge that we have in our community. And uh, because of that, we do a lot of mentorship and training through art. Uh, and, uh, basically to show them that you can do something for yourself when it comes to the arts. But I also work with Remy Nak, the guy, the gentleman taking a photo, taking a photo of me right now. Uh, he's the founder of Remy Nak Studios where we actually use crea uh, comic books and creative writing and, uh, and, and also inspire children to, to, to come up with TV shows and all those things. So as you can see, we do a lot of work I personally do a lot of work outside the studio. And the idea is to make sure community is awakened, community is shown the importance of art, and community is, 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 is shown that art is something of value when it comes to our trajectory as human beings. Uh, currently, the government is focusing on sciences, uh, but I believe Without the arts, the sciences as well can't stand on their own. The scientists need to have cameras that can take their photos and, and so that we know what they're actually working on. So those are some of the things that we need to actually see as artists. Where can we venture into the community so that we can, we can, we can push or help our leaders, our youth leaders, uh, build better communities, but using the arts. We, we, are, we can actually come up with a lot of projects within our communities here that can help people understand the value of art. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I would say, I, I, I think first of all, activities are way important to help keep art positive, you know? Uh, I have a vision of uh, teaching people how to print fabric. Uh, one of my first, my first collection is a Karamoja based collection where I'm telling people about the Karamoja community, what they do, nomadic pastoralism and all these things. 
uh, art could be something that portrays a picture out there for people to understand more about themselves that creates a picture for them to be better you know when uh, you create a fabric about about um, i would say a culture people get to understand what that culture is they research more about the culture themselves and uh, that keeps an idea in their heads that the culture has to be preserved it has to go on despite the challenges and whatsoever come that comes up um it is way important to keep on sharing these ideas so that we build a better world around uh, around us so art is the key i feel that helps in doing that yeah yeah. Okay. Um, with that, with the question he asked about value of art, um, you see the value of a 50,000 shillings because of the, the picture of a chizike. <laughs> that's, that's one of the values that we see with art. It's, a, it's an outprint. And the other thing is, uh, I believe with that, as used as value of art, you would look at me, I was inspired by the painting of Mona Lisa. That's when I was like, hey, if that thing can cost over a million dollar, it means that if I start drawing now, I can have something better or change, something can change, that can change my life. Meaning that art can change lives, and that's the value of art. There are a lot of people that we have seen, as you said, you have moved to countries, you have been educated, you have, been, you have gained a lot from art, and that's, I believe, with the value and the stories you tell, that's the value of art. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you very much, guys. Uh, feel free to interact with any of the artists, any of the people around here. Please connect with as many people as possible because you never know who you, can, you, who you will meet. But uh, from me, that's thank you. And uh, let's keep sharing, let's keep connecting uh, as the evening winds. Yeah.